point is we want to discuss Shamima Begum. Now, I don't know what you felt about the documentary that the BBC made during the week. It was 90 minutes, hugely supportive to Shamima Begum, who at the end of the day did leave this country, betray this country and went off uh, to Syria uh, to join ISIS. There's equally been some consternation, let's put it that way, about a Times magazine piece which put her as the cover girl. You know, apparently now that she's changed the niqab for yoga leggings, she should now be re-entered into Western society. You can probably tell where I am on this. I don't think she's a victim. I don't like some of the rhetoric around this girl. At the end of the day, she was 15. I'm the mother of a 14-year-old, and when you're that age, you know what you're doing. L Narinda, you want to kick it off? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm a mother. I've got a 15-year-old daughter, and they are impressionable. And actually, I think the BBC documentary did a massive service in shedding fantastic new light on things that actually we didn't know before. Metropolitan Police knew that she was vulnerable and actually sent out letters that she was a vulnerable child who was at risk of being radicalised a month earlier, and they didn't let the parents know, they didn't let the airports know. How did a 15-year-old girl in this country, a teenage girl, get to Syria? How? Well, she looked online. She wasn't looking online so for that long vulnerable. before. So she wasn't vulnerable. Because there was a journalist, Andrew Drury, who has said he's interviewed Begum six times. She wanted to go there. She wasn't coerced. She wasn't radicalised well, from a young age. That's his opinion. That's his opinion. All right, Emma, Well, you're allowed, to, you're allowed to change your opinion and story. She was, she was 15 years old. and she You was, can't change the facts. But, I, you know... I we think, don't know the facts. I, I think that it really is quite abominable, actually, that they put her on the front of the Times magazine. Because imagine being one of the Yazidi victims victims of Islamic State or one of the Shia children who had their, their parents executed by Islamic State, looking at this woman who went there from Britain, yes, but she, she wasn't a woman, she was a child. Well, she was 15 she years was old a teenager. and groomed Let's, online. She's above Let's the age, get Emma's opinion then. She's above the age Linda. of criminal responsibility, whether, regardless of whether someone's Sorry, impressionable. Really. Unfortunately, actions do have consequences. And the primary responsibility of the British people when it comes to whether or not she should return here is to the safety of the people who are here. As far as I'm concerned, she's a traitor. She betrayed our country by going to join Islamic State. But what I think is most concerning, and I think the reason why so many people have been, to put it lightly, disgruntled by this, is because the way that she is being presented as is, is as if she was herself a lamb to the slaughter, as yes. if she is this kind of victim. Um, that she's being, she's being presented in such a way, both by the BBC and by The Times, as someone that the British public should feel sorry for. Yeah. And However, it's also... And it's also earlier, okay, let's bring Narinda in. However, let's bring years in on earlier, that. she was also demonised by that very same press as being this ISIS bride, this jihadist. This, well, she, she was, wasn't she, bride. She, was. she was a groomed child online. And I think this begs the bigger question. Mm. As parents in this country, why did a, a, a British-born national get groomed and radicalised online and manage to get to Syria? Well, you can't escape that. Now her citizenship has been revoked. Had that sex a but she did, Narinda, she, she had... did describe the Manchester Arena bombing of as course, retaliation. And that was a terrible thing to say. Children it was died a in that. She said it in a camp after giving birth 40 hours. Where is the redemption here? She's a 15-year-old child when we she got radicalised. She was, if she was Why a man, are we, we not be saying this? Britain should be taking responsibility. The government have set a dangerous precedent in revoking her citizenship. It's so bad they've done that. She deserves a fair trial. She needs to be back in this country, not sat in a camp for the rest of her life for a mistake she but made. We tried, you said there's a, there's a problem with evidence. There is a yes. problem with evidence. I mean, it was a long time ago that she went. She went as a, a kind of A student. This wasn't a girl who was sort of... 13 years old, she was being groomed online. But 13. she was a bright girl, right? She, she, she would have, I mean, don't you think as a mother, 13-year-olds, they, they know their own minds. 15-year-olds, exactly. they know their so own minds. Gonna, but you've got to look at so many different aspects here. And the fact is, she... This country cannot, if we take, if we send terrorists back to their country, foreign-born terrorists, why aren't we taking ours back? She's our problem to take and back and deserves a fair trial. It's the rule of law. Well, firstly, there's no way we will be talking about her in these terms if she was a, a male fighter who chosen to go well, out. she was a white she girl, chose, actually. She chose. wouldn't be talking like this. And that's not true because we stripped Jack Letts of his citizenship and he was a well, white there was also Canadian a white girl that was also and she but was allowed if back you in. Just let me make a point because I think that, you know, firstly, fundamentally, we wouldn't be referring to her in this, vic this victimhood narrative if she was a man. Um, but you mentioned her coming back and having a fair trial. But the fact is, it's very difficult to collect evidence in a war zone that is admissible at trial. The conviction rate for foreign fighters is extremely low. One of the reasons why the Home Secretary has the power to strip 
for uh, dual nationals of their citizenship is for security reasons. And we can't know all of the security reasons that Sajid Javid was aware of at the time when he made that decision. It was a politi- she's a political but, pawn. It was to, to appease the baying crowds, I mean, actually. But, it was to appease... The, a, a, a government should not have that much power. It's a huge amount of power to say, I'm South Asian, my parents were born in India, therefore what crime perpetrates that actually Narinda you would be sent back to India because you did A, B, or C. It, it, that means any, I have no right. The idea, do you not the idea that it's racist British, is demonstrably untrue. Do you not effectively renounce your citizenship if you go and side with the As enemy? an adult, yes, but not as a child. She was a child, and she was, she was married within 10 days of 15 years old. So basically you could say she was a child... She was a child. She was sex trafficked as a child <laughs> and married within 10 days and th- lost three children. But, but Where according that to com- other journalists, according to other journalists, sorry, I will refer to Drury because let's face it, he's interviewed this woman. He's a journalist. Yeah, he's not he's, a judge. He's interviewed he's not a judge. So you're going to believe one journalist who gives you the BBC narrative, but not another who has interviewed her six times. He says she wasn't radicalised from a young age. She went online for a couple of months. The next minute she's out there. Camilla. So you're we, talking about grooming. But, but Camilla, when did this grooming take place? But let the, let the British court to decide that we believe in our criminal justice but system. she won't she won't it's very unlikely she's got that no she will right. be successfully tried exactly and if there is a security risk that we're not aware oh, come of on, we no have sh- a responsibility to the british public the that, british that, government, that is the, simple the british government have successfully brought back hundreds of people from syria shamima begum is being made a target of and she's used a political pawn to appease the bane do you think she's a risk to the public emma i mean she does seem extremely contrite in these interviews she's clearly changed she's become much more westernized in the camp mm-hmm. that she's being held in? I think that, firstly, we don't know what the Home Secretary knows. I think there are a lot of indications that things may not be as she is describing them. She obviously obviously has, uh, you know, she, she's, she's part of a very sophisticated PR campaign to try and get her back here. She is appealing it through the appropriate channels, which I think is right that she should be able to remotely, do that. Remotely, remotely, not in... It's very unfair. I of course, remotely. Ask ourselves, you I can't do it otherwise. To, well, because she doesn't, she's stateless. I think we need to ask ourselves, she's as a stateless. country, what does it say about us? We're not saying she did right. She made a mistake. We are not condoning what she did, but she was a benign member and she was a child I think bride. we shouldn't trust her. I, but I, well, we, maybe we don't know. We don't know. You're putting things up there saying we shouldn't trust her. I'm a mother to a 15-year-old daughter. And if that was my daughter, I'd want her back home. She was born in this country. I don't buy the PR campaign. I just don't. And I don't think the British public For do either. Judge to I don't think we have a responsibility to her anymore. OK, we'll have to call a truce on that one. Thank <laughs> you for your opinions, ladies. Well expressed.